Hello and welcome to actually our very first Nintendo Insider discussion. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Dragon Quest Builders, which we've been lucky enough to be playing for about a month now actually. It's out in February. Um, I'm joined again today by Ryan. Hello Ryan, how are you? Hello Alex. I'm excited. First retail release, well big retail release for Switch for 2018. I'm excited to learn about Dragon Quest Builders. Do you know anything about Dragon Quest Builders? I know little to nothing about Dragon Quest Builders, or I'd say the Dragon Quest franchise in general, so tell me everything. <laughs> well, you're in, you're in the right place at the right time to learn everything you need to know from me, who has a general a general understanding of this game. Um, hopefully I'll kind of give, give people a bit more of an insight into what to expect from it. Uh, we'll kind of talk through the general setup, just to give people an idea of that. Um, yeah, so I mean, in terms of the actual game itself, um, it, it's not a, in a sense, a brand new game. It's come out on other platforms before. Uh, it's been ported to Switch. Uh, it's a Square Enix game, obviously. Dragon Quest is a long-running RPG series, uh, as is, uh, you know, Final Fantasy as well. Um, but this game is kind of like a spin-off. So if you think of Dragon Quest as an RPG series, it has the same visual style. Um, it's actually based after the first game. But instead of defeating the final boss, the final boss is actually still alive and he basically corrupts the world and you are a lone man uh, or woman, I think. You can be a female builder as well um, in the midst of that. Um, you're not actually a hero, though, this time. You're a, a legendary builder and everybody in the world has forgotten how to build. Do you know how <laughs> to build things, Ryan? Uh, I'm, pre I'm pretty good with Lego, I'd say. Uh... Oh, Lego's, <laughs> Lego's a good start. It's a good start. To... Um so yeah, so everyone in this world, they've forgotten how to build everything. Um, so it's down to you basically to restore light to the world. Um, and it's chaptered in kind of four different locations. Um, so each is kind of self-containing. Uh, so each chapter is like an individual world. And once you complete one chapter, you move on to the next, etc. Um, but you can't carry things between them. So they're all kind of self-contained. That's probably the best way to describe them. Um, but beyond that, um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of that voxel style. So, you know, like Minecraft. Have you played Minecraft I may have heard much? of it, yeah. may have heard of Minecraft. That uh, small little game by a Swedish developer. Um, <laughs> I guess so so just, some... just how much in common does it? Because I look at screenshots of it and the, the similarities to Minecraft in terms of visual style, as you mentioned, the, the cubes and, and the blocks are there. How much in common does it actually have with, with a game like Minecraft? Well, it comes from the same... De no, it's not the same developer. <laughs> um, I guess, for, for me, like Minecraft was something that obviously became a globally popular game, and so obviously um, taking inspiration from that, it, it's probably got the same kind of um, approach. Um, so, I mean, you... It's a kind of third person, though, so whereas Minecraft is kind of like... I think you can change it to third person in Minecraft. Um, I never really got into Minecraft, whereas Dragon Quest Builders, uh, which I previously played on PS4 as well as obviously Switch now, um, was a game that I found a bit more engrossing because it's more objective based. So, you know, you basically wake up in the world, there's this mysterious godly voice that kind of, you know, uh, tells you that you are not a hero, you're a legendary builder and tells you the plight of everything that's happening. It's all very dramatic. Um, but you're it's like a normal day in life then really yeah. yeah I mean you know I wake up and there's this light beaming down at me in the morning and I'm like oh have I been <laughs> chosen um, but you basically have uh, a, a town or a village that's been destroyed by the uh, the evil dragon lord um, and you basically have to rebuild it so it's a bit more uh, structured in the way that you approach it it's, it's the same in the sense that uh, anything in the world if you whack it it kind of breaks and then mm -hmm. you uh, can collect those as kind of materials or ingredients. Um, and then you use those to uh, build up the kind of uh, town. Um, and then as you start to restore it, it kind of levels up. And then more kind of people turn up and go, hey, what's going on over here? And they you kind of build out um, the town to add more people. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's... It's a game that you can kind of simply run around in. There's there's actually a separate mode called Terra Incognita, uh, which is kind of a bit more of a, a free roaming mode that you can play. Um, but the actual kind of chapter approach is a bit more structured than Minecraft. So you're not literally just dropped into it and, you know, left to, to do whatever you want and not really understand, um, apart from at night, 
uh, nasty things come out during the day, less nasty things are around. Are there are um, there any nasty things to sort of like cause a threat in in yeah, Dragon I mean, Quest? At are all? you are you familiar with the slimes? I'm sure you must oh, have yeah, seen the slimes. Yeah, no, I yeah. yep I. So they're bouncing them. around. <laughs> That's about yeah. as far as my knowledge would probably go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so the, there's there's familiar enemies in there. They're all kind of drawn from Dragon Quest as a series, as far as far as I know. Um, so yeah, so they're all in the game. Um, in terms of um, attacking them, there is kind of combat in this game. It's how is it's it? Not it's not turn based RPG or, or JRPG style as right. you know you kind of expect from Dragon Quest. It is literally that the same hammer or uh, wooden club that you're using to kind of gather materials and cut down trees and whatever, that you, you basically just go up to the enemies and just whack them. And they have like a little health bar above. And, you know, as you continue to whack them, they eventually run out of health and they disappear in a, a, a poof of smoke and um, may leave a material behind. So okay. it, are you leveling not... up as a character as, as you defeat these guys? or There's no leveling up as far as i recall apart from um, the town wasn't it yeah so yeah. yeah so you level your town up by building more rooms and you get kind of blueprints to build those so you know that's all um uh, it's not you not there's not a lot of hand holding in it but mm -hmm. certainly the way that the mission structure and quest structure is that you kind of get pushed through the game um that that kind of guides you a bit and steers you through it um, in terms of your character, um, you you level them up, not in a kind of a experience way, um, but as you progress through the game, you get access to more materials. So, um, whenever you pick something up for the first time, so if you picked up I don't know uh, coal or iron or chopped down a tree and had some wood that you kind of gathered, um, whenever you pick something up for the first time, it you your character kind of remembers how to make things with that material. So as you progress through the game, you don't have access to everything straight off. Mm -hmm. um, but as you kind of go through the quests, um, you will basically be rewarded with these portals that you kind of go to. And you hop through the portal to uh, another kind of area that will have, you know, uh, iron there or, you know, some other material that you don't have access to in your main world. Um, and obviously then when you retrieve that, you come back. Um, so once you get those, you can then basically um, forge uh, swords, more equipment, um, so you can get like armor and stuff. So the leveling is more related to the equipment that you're building for your character rather than by going out and whacking people over the head with a with a mallet. So right. yeah, it's a bit more like that. Okay. So yeah. So. so in terms of the going back to the building your town or building a town, um, what is that? Is it you're building like the typical things you would expect, like uh, like a blacksmiths or, or you know a place that sells food? And are you building homes for these people as well? Is it that sort of thing? Um, well, the the kind of homes that you build are a bit more um, <laughs> a bit more basic in the sense that uh, you you build a room which requires that um, you don't have to have a roof on it. It's it's just every wall has to be like two blocks high um, and it has to be a certain size in the sense you can fit certain objects in it. Mm -hmm. So the the bedroom, as an example, um, this is again off the top of my head, so I hope it's right. Um, you put a uh, you have to put a fire source in there, so like a bonfire or a lamp or something like that, uh, or torch. Um, you have to put a bed in there, and there's and a door. So you have to kind of basically tick a couple of boxes before it is recognised as being a room. Um, and that's the same for everything in the, the kind of town. So. There are things like uh, somewhere where you make food um, and then you have to have a, kind of a spit fire roast thing um, and then um, a chest where if, if a villager wants to come in and make some food themselves, um, they shove it in the chest and you can go and pick that up and then use it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so in terms of the actual building side of it, um, I mentioned the blueprint slightly earlier. Um, so if there is kind of like a quest where a character wants to make you to make something specific um, they'll give you a blueprint that you kind of like stick on the floor um, and then it gives you a list of like basically all the items that you need to build this larger room mm -hmm. so um, and it's quite clever because it introduces certain things to you like in the first world um, obviously you kind of 
getting used to the game. It's kind of more of a tutorial world. And in each yeah. kind of chapter for these kind of separate worlds that you kind of flip between um, are probably about 10 hours or so long. So they're not, you know, it's not like small content in that sense. Um, no. Not single how, how is the, the learning curve? Because it sounds like there's a lot of, a lot of things in play here uh, and, you know, it might be a bit overwhelming to begin with. Does it sort of like introduce that uh, steady clip that, you know, you're, you're not feeling like you're taking on too much too quickly or is it, is, does it, can it feel like it is a bit slow in the early going? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is slow to start off because it's trying to layer the game up, you know, yeah. as, as with any game, it wants to make sure that you know this before you you know you know how to build a room before you go off and build something a bit more elaborate Mm -hmm. um and so i mean in terms of the actual pacing of it and and the actual steep incline of of difficulty and all that kind of stuff i wouldn't say it's too challenging um it, it becomes more of a resource management type thing um where you know if you want to build something and you don't have a particular you know, enough of a certain material you have to go and run off to go and find that so it's more remembering where those materials are rather than mm-hmm. um you know any kind of you know having to go and kill particularly difficult enemies or anything like that um so yeah so i mean it's it's not an overly challenging game in the sense that uh you know you'll be killed and lose 10 hours progress or something Mm. you know it's not like an rpg in that sense no. it's more that as you progress through the game you have access to more materials and then you have to um then go and find you know more materials and you kind of juggle more things where you know the the items that you're building um they they kind of range between um you know weapons and armor for your character um things such as chests to store things in um, or things to make things with such as a uh, a carpenter's workshop table thing a sewing machine um, a stove a furnace all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. Um, as you kind of go through the game those steadily start to require more and more materials in terms of type Um, so you're having to hunt around more to kind of be able to create those so the time sink element of it or the fact you're kind of spending hour upon hour in this game comes from the fact that you're having to hunt out different items and learning where the materials are to you know basically make them so um it's not too bad i wouldn't i wouldn't kind of worry that you're going to be playing this and racking your brain it's a bit more gentle in that sense it's not it's not overly challenging um but certainly i spent you know you can sink like three or four hours into it at a time you get into kind of like a pattern of like, right, well, now that is, and I want to make that. And then before you know it, it's like, you know, 2 a.m. and you're kind of just lying there like, why am I still, what, where's that, what, where's that time gone? Uh, <laughs> so there's all that kind of stuff going on yeah. uh, with it as well. Sounds like the Stardew Valley effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've been playing The Sims as well. It's that kind of like, you know, it's it's that kind of, I don't know, you kind of get transfixed by games sometimes and you just end mm. up kind of playing it thinking, oh, you know, I play for a couple of hours and then, checking the clock and finding that you've actually just you know your life is disappearing um without you knowing and on that cheery note um, <laughs> <laughs> how uh how does how does it look because uh, you mentioned that this this had been released uh was it was it a ps4 exclusive originally i think it's ps4 let me double check um, yeah so it was ps3 in japan only mm-hmm. um then playstation 4 and vita which was uh worldwide so it's, okay. it's everywhere and obviously then you know switch is the next kind of release um yeah and it's it's a game that i always kind of hoped would come to switch um i think they mentioned it a couple of years ago that there were you know there's the potential there when the console was known as nx uh, mysteriously um so yeah it's 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 in terms of the uh the difference between playing on tv mode and handheld mode i mean you know in terms of actually a being sat in front of your TV and walking around with your Switch, they're obvious. Um, mm-hmm. The general presentation on the TV uh, mode, in terms of graphically, um, it, it's not quite as sharp as the PS4 version. Um, there's kind of a bit more of a uh, a muddied sheen to it, in a sense. Yeah, I mean that's to be expected, um, isn't it? I suppose when it comes to you know the two consoles and then, and then the differences in power for sure. Yeah, it's it it's not terrible. You know, like I went back to play yeah. PS4 and I was like, well, you know, they they look, you know, favorably comparable. Um, it's just not quite as crisp as 
you know as, as ps4 but then obviously that comes at the benefit that you can walk around with it because mm. when you start playing it in uh, handheld mode and it's obviously 720p on there and um it actually looks a lot sharper on handheld mode yeah than it does on the tv so if you're someone who's playing in handheld mode I, you know no problem just enjoy it no problem at all if it's TV mode and you you know you have a PS4 as well, um, a you'll probably be able to get the PS4 copy for cheaper these days. Um, but certainly it's going to look a bit better as someone who's a bit more of a you know TV orientated um, player. Mm-hmm. Um, but certainly it's not um, it's not that much of a uh, step back. Um, but I think you know for me it's that kind of thing of where you know you have to weigh up whether you want to. I mean it's the same with every Switch game, isn't it? You know. Do you want to play it on the go and have that benefit, or do you want to? I mean, kind of... this seems like one of those games that would definitely benefit. I think in the same way that Stardew Valley um, has done for me on the Switch, um, where you know you have that freedom to not just have to play it through the TV, but be able to do it do a day's work or two days work on on your train into work or whatever the case may be. This seems like another yeah. one of those kind of games that would definitely benefit from from being able to play it anywhere. Yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly a game that you can chip away at. It's it's still got that kind of day to night cycle in it as well. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it, there's no. Uh, I mean, at night time, obviously, monsters come out that are a bit more aggressive, and so you're having you know the quickest way to sort that is just to go and find a bed mm-hmm. somewhere and sleep until the morning, and then it's all all gone. Um, but certainly, you know, if it was that you want to kind of just hop into it for a couple of hours, uh, well, not an hour, if you want. <laughs> I feel sorry, people. They're on a bus for a couple of hours around. Uh, <laughs> I don't know London or wherever they are. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is a game that you can kind of dip into for a short period. Um, obviously, the benefit of Switch as well is you can suspend it. So even if you don't finish what you're doing, you can still suspend the console and pick it up on your journey home or when you know, when you actually get back home. So certainly, that's a, a big plus um, for it as well. Okay. Um, and you know, the, the TV mode as well is, is perfectly fine. I've you know I've been flipping between the two um, just to kind of get a feel for both um, angles of it mm-hmm. um, I think I I'm, I'm pro- predominantly playing Switch on TV um, I do play it in handheld mode every now and then but I'm not travelling as much at the moment so um, but certainly you know, I know that people like to sit you know while someone's watching TV they can play Switch alongside it and, and it's certainly a game to kind of sink a few hours into that way as well so, okay. so yeah I suppose uh my final question dun, dun, dun. is are you enjoying it <laughs> well um yeah so i mean obviously it's the second time i've been playing it through um i'm just finishing off the second world um in the in the, the second chapter um obviously it's not out for a couple more weeks so i've still got a bit more time to to wrap it up um but each world is kind of themed so the first one is a bit more kind of happy kind of you know it's it's lost its light and there's clouds everywhere and you need to kind of scatter the clouds and restore uh, light to the world mm-hmm. um, the second one is more that everywhere's been poisoned so you have to run around kind of basically um, hunting down NPCs and then curing them of whatever illness they have um, yeah. and basically remove the poison from that world and, and uh, make everybody healthy again Yay! Hmm. so certainly each kind of world as you move through them um, has a different feel to it, it's not just that you're kind of alright oh, I've done that one now, on to the next and it feels pretty similar Um so there's a lot of kind of differentiation to it, and so obviously, you know, uh, playing it through again, I'm I'm enjoying the chance to do that. Um, it, it's certainly a nice game that fits into the kind of Switch, um, you know, play however you want to play it kind of mantra. Um, mm-hmm. So I think a lot of people have a lot of fun with this, and obviously as well, there's a sequel on the way as well. So, you know, if, if this is something that you enjoy uh, early on, you know, Square is also developing a, um, a sequel to it. Uh, which does add in multiplayer, which is something that's missing this time around on on Switch. Uh, okay, it is a cool. it is a single player game, um, but certainly it's something that you know I, I'm enjoying throwing more hours into. You know, compared to something like Minecraft. So um, yeah. So uh, if I convinced you, are you, are you kind of it's ready, one ready that to throw I... money at it? It's one that I'm definitely considering. I've got it on pre-order at the moment, um, but I think with you know there's there's a bit of a gap at the moment in terms of Switch releases. I might I might definitely give this one a, a look. Yeah, it's it's slightly cheaper as well. I think it's thirty five pounds, so it's not you know typical Switch price. At the moment's fifty pounds kind of for a game, mm. so um, it's a bit cheaper as well. So yeah, uh, so yeah. And I think a game like this, if I'm ever gonna get a chance to give it the time, it it, it you know it it deserves. I suppose it's gonna be 
being able to play it on the go and take it with me so yeah yeah so um hopefully you know if people have any questions obviously write them in the comments below the the video um and beyond that i think it's out on february 9th i think in uh, europe um yeah so uh, and also north america i think as well so let's check it out